Hey, thank you, uh, Vincent. Um, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Howard Hines, and I'm going to be talking about a project where we're looking at um, clipping the side of carrot beds to see um, what effect it would have on sclerotinia control. Um, just a little bit about my company. It's an independent consultancy um, specializing purely in carrots, parsnips, and, and some potatoes. Um, my um, bread and butter is carrot agronomy, and um, I'm covering about 1,500 uh, hectares of carrots and parsnips, mainly in the north and the east of England, um, a little bit in Scotland, but some of you may be aware there's a big vote on today in Scotland, so we may have to lump Scotland into Europe after today. Um, also, one of the other areas that I'm quite interested in, in getting involved in is trials and development, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today, some of that, that area of my work. Um, so, why clip carrot foliage? Um, we find certainly um, in the UK most of the infection uh, comes from resting bodies, sclerosis in the soil, um, and these seem to be worse where we've had oilseed rape in the rotation. Peas and beans also seem to uh, increase the amount of sclerosis we get in the soil. Um, and the predominant variety in the UK is um, Nairobi. And the problem we have with that variety is it produces a very dense foliage which falls over. We then get some dead leaf underneath there and it's the perfect environment for, um, uh, for sclerosis to, to get a hold of once uh, they start germinating. So the purpose of clipping is to try and, once this foliage is flopped over, I'll show you a few photographs in a moment of what we're trying to achieve, but it's to try and get some more airflow through the crop. Um, and we, we think as well it's also going to allow better application of late season fungicides as well. So there you can see the problem we have is when uh, these, uh, uh, oops, the apothecia, you can see the little white things, I can't get the, uh, the light to work, but uh, you can see that on the far left, and they produce the, uh, the ascospores, which then infect this, this sort of dying um, stem on the right, and then we get the infection, which then spreads to the rest of the bed. The, um, you, some of you may have been at Arcachon, and um, Kevin Sanders presented the work from Canada, so the idea that we're doing at the UK has come from Canada and, uh, and Kevin has kindly uh, helped in the development of the system we've, we're using in the UK. But they were, they, you can see the clipping system um, which is similar to the one we've got with the discs and they run through the crop. The Canadians are on, uh, are on rows like some of the European countries are and then you can see on the far right how it opens up the airflow. And they've been getting quite impressive results. They've been getting up to 80, over 80% 80 in the foliage um, and reductions. And, and even in store, they've been getting um, up to 70% reductions. And the best timing is in the middle picture there, which is at road closure. So the UK clipping, after we um, saw this in Arkishon, we started uh, doing some work with the basic rotary clipper. And then we started adopting the same system as the Canadians with discs. Um, we were fortunate in the fact that we got, um, we got a project together. Um, uh, BASEF um, uh, kindly helped fund both my work and, and Root Water, a machinery and irrigation company developing a, a system. And in 2011, we developed a, a three bed system and in the last three years, Root Water have been actually doing commercial contracting with it. And this year, they've clipped around about 300 hectares with a couple of machines. Um, and as I said, the optimum timing we find in the UK is when the road closes, which is usually late, late July to early August. So this is the UK system, um, three bed. You can see the big disks which run down the side of the beds. Um, and we can, we can run these quite quickly. We find almost the quicker you go, the better cut you get. So we can get up to, up to 200 acres or um, around about 80 to 100 hectares a day clipped. And you can see how, 
uh, as the system moves through, through the crop, it opens up that gap between the beds. We're mostly in the UK, mostly on 1.8 metre or 2 metre beds. So the, the only opportunity we have is to clip on the outside. And you can see there, that's, as, as the clipper goes through, the foliage drops off and into the wheeling. And this was a picture I took from this year. On the left is the unclipped foliage. And on the right, this was taken in early September. So it was about four weeks after the clipping had done. And you can see all the, the brown matter foliage in, in, in the bottom of the crop. So the assessments which I carried out um, for the five years of the project, um, we, tend, we tended to choose three or four high-risk sites where we thought we'd get sclerotinia. We probably clipped at more than that, but what, we only chose the sites where we saw disease starting in the unclipped areas. I found that the best way to assess was on the, the north side of the bed where the foliage had, had, had fallen over to, because that's where we get most disease, but I did try... I did, in most cases, also assess the south side, but we were getting very little disease there. Um, and assessments were, the first assessments generally carried out in um, early September, um, before you can visually see the disease patches, um, but basically walking down, down the, the beds, lifting the foliage up and looking for the presence of any white mycelium to, to, to look for the very early stages. Um, so this was done sort of randomly at about 100 positions in, in each field, and then that was replicated in both the clipped and the unclipped areas uh, four times. Um, and in some years, we did compare varieties. And one of the other things we did in the later assessments in October, once you could start seeing the disease patches forming, is I did look at, I, I did a spatial assessment of where those patches were forming on the bed. So this is a summary of the, um, the main work each year is, is, a, is an average of the three or four sites. And you can see that in most years, the, the clipping has given, has given a, 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 a much lower incidence of disease than the clip. Um, the most, we, we, we did get a variation in disease from year to year. 2011 produced the most disease with about 26% in, uh, in the unclipped. Um, but the differences were, were similar. The, the, the biggest difference we got was in 2012, where clipping actually gave over 70% benefit in control. And the least difference we got was in 2013, when we got about 50% difference. But overall, the average of the, um, of the five years there was, was a benefit of about, around about just over 60% better control with, um, with clipping. And this year, this is one of the first assessments I did a few weeks ago. And it's, it, the, the timing of clipping is very crucial. You want to you get in before, before any disease is started underneath the foliage. But once the foliage is clipped over, we've got this site pretty much spot on. Um, and you can see when these, these are the four different uh, beds that we assessed. Um, and in bed two and three, we didn't, I didn't see any sclerotinia at all. Um, so we were getting, getting over, if you average the four, the four beds, so we're getting a, a benefit of over 90% control. And if you think, one thing I forgot to mention is that all these fields have had conventional fungicide programs, and they've had a two-week program of fairly good products. Um, so the clipping actually is having a bigger effect than the, the, the fungicide at this late stage. Variety, uh, a couple of years, we, um, generally it's all been on Nairobi, but a couple of years we looked at, uh, in one of the first years we looked at Nirac. Um, this is uh, uh, two years ago, um, we uh, assessed that we had Miami in the same field as the Nairobi. So uh, we compared it, and you can see Miami is a much more upright variety and doesn't flop over as much as Nairobi, so you can see there's nearly double the amount of sclerotinia in the Nairobi as in Miami, but we're still getting a benefit from clipping even though we're getting lower levels of disease in the Miami. And proportionately, the benefit was about the same of just over 40% uh, 
benefit in this case. We did come to this trial a bit late, and there was already a bit of disease in it when we clipped, so we were not getting the 90% the control that, that's possible. Spatially, um, it's quite interesting uh, that um, two years I, I, I've done this, and in this year we got about 70% of the disease is on the north side of the bed. And it's basically the way we get a prevailing wind in the UK from the south and southwest. So if the field is sideways on, then the foliage is all flopped over to one side. Um, and we're finding that the majority of the disease is starting from one side of the bed. Um, and, and I think that the majority of the benefit of clipping is clipping that side. Um, we do get some disease in the centre of the bed. Um, and there's not much we can do about that because we, we've tried clipping inside the bed, but there's nowhere for the foliage to dry up. And you can see the south side doesn't get much disease at all. I did one last year and we got no, no disease on the south side of the bed. So conclusions, um, the trials have shown an average of 60% benefit from clipping. And uh, as I mentioned, timing is quite critical. So it's, um, with a contract system, it is very difficult to get a lot of area done in, a in, in that key period. Um, and it, it maybe lends itself to a grower having his own machine. Um, and I think if you see, if you, if you go later on in August and early September, you don't see the, the benefit that you would do early on. Um, Nairobi's giving us the biggest benefit, but we are seeing benefits in other varieties, so it's, uh, it's not totally ex excluded to clipping Nairobi. Um, and we, found, we find in the, you know, that, it's, that most of the infection is, is on that far side of the bed where, where the foliage is, is, um, is, is blown over to by the wind. So I'd like to thank your attention. I should acknowledge as well um, the help of Bassett. Hola, buenas. Primero agradecerte la presentación que ha estado muy bien y quería preguntarte si al realizar ese corte eh, aumenta la presión de otro tipo de enfermedades, si tenéis que hacer más tratamientos o echar algún tipo de cicatrizante. Lo siento, uh, no hablo español uh, bien. <laughs> sí, habla, sí habla. We can translate, We can translate please. Um, Can you repeat your question, please? Yeah. Vale, vale. Yeah. Sure. The question asked was, um, do we increase other diseases by clipping? Um, no, I haven't seen any, any, uh, any other increase in, 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 in... If anything, we probably get a slight reduction in alternaria because some of the alternaria also develops from the wheeling. Um, but, but this is not, not obvious. But we, we haven't seen any other, other, other problems where we've clipped the foliage. It's very important for the foliage to fall away into the wheeling so you get a, a gap. Um, if you get any strands of stem still connecting to the main crop, it, it, it is possible for the sclerotinia from the dead foliage to then bridge into, into the healthy. But we don't, we don't see um, increases in alternaria. Hello, I'm uh, Christine Beas from Invigno. Did you assess uh, the disease on the carrot uh, roots during uh, winter conservation in the field or uh, in the f during storage? We, um, we have done, but so far the sites that we've assessed um, um, didn't, get, didn't get the crown rot. Um, and it's been quite difficult because in the UK we, uh, we cover with, with straw. Um, so it's, it's not so easy to, to, to do the assessments. Um, but we, 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 we have done that, but um, we haven't seen roots, root rots developing in, in the clipped or the unclipped. So we've, we've not seen any, any differences so far. OK, thank you. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Thibaut Cadet from Silevant. Uh, I would like to ask you if you think you could gain more um, uh, efficiency if you also uh, were cutting inside the rows and not only the side of the beds. Yes, I think uh, if you can remember back to the Canadian work where they, they cut between the rows, 
their, their results were higher than in the UK. Um, but our problem is, if, if you cut inside the bed, then the, the foliage lies on top of the, the healthy foliage. Um, we tried doing this, but it, we think we cause more of a problem. So I think for us to get better results, we need to go to maybe a, a smaller bed system or, or even a ridge system. Um, but it's, it, you know, beds are the main system in the UK, so, and, and our soil type is, is, is very sandy, so we, we, we can't produce the, um, the ridges as, as some countries like Holland and, and Germany and can, Canada can. Okay, thanks. I had another question. Uh, are you just observing the um, disease's impact, or do you also uh, have a look at the harvesting and uh, the yield at the end? Yeah, because I, I, this was one of the concerns when we first started clipping, that it might reduce the yield because we're taking foliage away. But I've done a few assessments, which I didn't show today, and found that there was, there was no difference in, in the amount of yield. Um, and I think that maybe we, we, we could even be increasing the, um, the uniformity because the north side of the bed, often the, that's where we find all the very small roots because they, they don't have the, the light or the airflow to produce big roots. Eh, buenas tardes. Eh, quería preguntar do, dos cuestiones. La primera cuestión, cuando vosotros tapáis con paja... Eh, ¿De brozáis antes? Esa era la primera. Y la segunda, que es más importante, no sabemos lo que va a pasar a partir de ahora, eh, después del referente hoy en Escocia, porque según tenemos entendido, por lo menos en España, las máximas producciones o máximas extensiones de, de zanahorias están situadas por el clima que tienen. En Escocia, ¿qué va a pasar si, si en Escocia pasa el tema de la independencia? Gracias. Yeah. I understood the Norris, that's all. Does <laughs> uh, anyone translate? Buenas tardes. Eh, creo acordarme de las dos preguntas. La primera pregunta era que si cuando tapan las zanahorias con paja. Eh, para proteger en la zanahoria de, del tema de los fríos en invierno, si desbrozan la zanahoria. No. Okay. <laughs> the question, the first question that he is asking is: um, in winter, when you cover the carrots, uh, if you cut it, be the leaves after, before you do it. Can you just repeat? I didn't understand the question. When in winter, when you covered the yeah. carrots with the, the pa, if you cut the leaves. Yeah, we, we haven't tried cutting that late because um, normally if we've got the problem, it's, it's, it's occurred before then. We, we cover, in, in the UK, we cover in October the, the carrots with straw in the field. So... We, we haven't looked at that. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Second question. Is that it? Okay, thanks. All right, yeah, I get, I get it now. Um, the question was if Scotland becomes independent, will it have an effect on the uh, <laughs> carrot production there? I, uh, I don't think so. I think, I think, I think we. <laughs> And my comment was a little bit of uh, English humour as well, so I think we'll, we'll still, still stay good friends, whatever happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs>